All right, hi. How are you getting on? You well, you well? Hi. You're looking real nice. You've got a great rouge about your cheeks. Get up off the parliamentary side of your eyes and get a bit of colour in your cheeks. Quote from Michael Collins there. Um, it's mad the stuff that stays with you, you know. Or mad just qu- what, what things are just quoted by your friends, you know, your friend group. Anyway, look, uh, how are you doing? You well? You've got a bit of sun in you. Um, would you like a little more? Hmm, by the way, my name is The Sun. Um, no, I had a great champ line, right? If, you're, if your name was like, I don't think this name exists, but if your surname happens to be Heat, right? Johnny Heat or something. You say, uh, you approach someone wearing the color black and you say, um, oh, wearing black on a, on, a, on, a, on a day like today, that's brave. Don't you know um, dark colors attract the heat? By the way, my name is Johnny Heat. Show my business card, hopefully. And then set it on fire. That's what I would do. My name is Johnny Heat, and, I'd, and I'd, I would perfect that whole making cards appear from behind your fingers thing. And then I'd maybe get some flint or something in my fingernails. And I'm like, Pling, right here. You know? I'm also a cat. I mean, this is a flaming card. I'm a cat. My name is Johnny Heat. And I'm a dragon to you. Sorry, I fucked up the order to shot a blind. But how are you doing? You good? Oh, I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired. But I'm very proud of all the Eurovision stuff we were all doing there last week. Thank you so much if you came to any of the, the big Eurovision weekend that I had. It was too much. <laughs> it was all a lot, a lot. If anyone came to the Bureau de Change Song Contest in its biggest ever iteration, thank you so much. Selling out Liberty Hall Theatre. It was amazing. Ten comedians uh, performing as, uh, well, as real countries, but as fake performers in those countries. And the songs were unreal. We got a great write-up from Paste Magazine um, saying it was the height of parody, you know? So only onto bigger and better things. Congratulations again to Ali Fox, who won uh, and absolutely smashed the doors off. Now, she was Ireland, to be fair. Bit of bias in the room, but whatever. But uh, she was also the best performer with the best song. But so you can't be mad at that. And also, thanks to anyone who came to the Eurovision Watch Along, which was <laughs> which was insane. I mean, I don't know what I thought it would be, you know, talking over to Eurovision while Eurovision's happening, but also, like, not talking over the songs. It was very important not to talk over the songs, but I talked over the bits in between. As you know, I'm going for, um, what's his name, Marty Whelan's uh, little crown, little Eurovision crown. I don't think his heart's in it anymore, you know, in the Eurovision game, you know. Um, I think he needs to move over, you know, with the greatest respect, bow down to the, to the, bow down to the crown, but also abdicate it to me, you know, the young up-and-comer uh, of the Eurovision <laughs> whatever but anyway um, so that was all fun given all the facts and stuff and the guys were great I had Fanula J on, on it I had Killian Sunderman Shane Daniel Byrne coming out with zinger after zinger but you know I do think as a format it's kind of like it's not just putting a hat on a hat like adding co- adding additional commentary live to the Eurovision is not is, is not putting a hat on a hat it's putting like a tiny top hat fascinator that a cool woman would wear you know, to the races, a tiny top hat fascinator, a top and a, a, a huge Egyptian headdress. Do you know what I mean? It's like a tiny bowler hat atop of a, of um, like a tribal chief's head feathers. Do you know what I mean? It's a tiny hat on a much bigger, much more elaborate hat. <laughs> so um, maybe we might change the format a little bit. Thank you so much, everyone that came out, and it was so much fun, and we had such great cracks. So thank you very much for that. But I'm tired. I'm tired now. Had the young fella's birthday party there. Yesterday as well, uh, superhero themed, a lot of fun. He was dressed as Superman, which was iconic. I was like, it was. I have literally have photos of myself dressed in a Superman outfit. I was obsessed with Superman. We just love Superman three. Objectively, not the best Superman movie, but it was the one that we watched repeatedly. You know, me, me, and my older brother. Um, you know, and there's photos of us, you know, at about his age wearing Superman costume. You know, it's just, it's adorable. Now he was also wearing a non-canonical Superman mask. Got some of these little felt masks that all the kids were wearing, and they were all different superheroes. You had like little felt Wolverine in there, you know. There was, it was everyone. There was Nova, you know. There was like um, all you know Robin, and each, even like a little Thor hat and stuff. Loads of these like little boxes of them came. Got them on Amazon, and uh, he was wearing a Superman eye mask that had the Superman logo on it. So not canonical. He was also going around with a Captain America shield the whole time, but you know, hey, you know, have have a bit of fun. Not canonical. Technically not part of Superman canon, but once I kind of sat down with him eye to eye and explained how, look, you're, I know you're having fun, right, but you know this is not canonical, okay? All right, good, all right, I love you, mm-hmm, bye, you know, he understood it then. Um, But I was breaking the kids' hearts with my superhero knowledge, you know? Like, my niece was like, she was dressed as like a uh, Batgirl, but a princess outfit. Um, perfect for her, because she's obsessed with princesses. 
but she was like, um, she was like, Tony, can super can, er, can Batman fly? And she was she had a real smug face. She was trying to you know get clearly in an argument with her older brother. And she's like, can Batman fly? And I was like, no, no, he cannot fly. He can glide. And she was like, how does he glide? And I was like, well, he gets up to a really uh, gets up to like the top of a building and then just jumps off because he but because he's a cape, he can glide. And then she starts looking at her cape. And I was like, no, um, like he's got like a magic cape. So he's magic, actually. Fuck, 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 fuck. You know? Because kids would be like, well, my uncle said I'd glide. You know? Um, so, uh, so yeah. So I was kind of breaking breaking their hearts. But it was, um, it was a good, good fun. Me and Terry fighting the whole way in the prep. Being real short with each other. Where, what do you want me to do now? And then, net beforehand, it used to be like the door will ring. And then, you know, we'll just instantly swap. Instantly swap our expressions. And all of a sudden, we're just like, hey! Not fighting at all. Now, we have a good bit of uh, runway time, you know? Now, ter- Terry starts being okay with me. About five minutes before people arrive. There's a bit of a runway. So, it isn't so, you know, my head's not spinning with the change, you know? So, that was very nice of her to give me the five-minute courtesy from, you know, whatever. Just out each other's throats, you know what I mean? And it must break her heart, you know? Because, you know, she knows I'm a good father, you know? Um, and, you know, she knows I'm an, an, an impeccable lover, okay? But um, actually giving me jobs to do, like set the table, tidy, you know, she actually gets to see what I'm like, isn't it like what I would be like in a real job, you know? And the thing is, you have to kind of keep, you have to keep the other kind of status bars full, like Sims, you know what I mean? She looks at me and sees the Sims bar of a good father pretty high, you know? The Sims bar of being kind of funny quite high. But then she sees how shit I am and, <laughs> and how slow I am to do anything and how I'm kicking my feet and I'm looking at my phone and I don't want to do anything. And that, then that bar is draining quick, you know? That bar is low and it's actually draining all the other bars quite quick. So you have to keep all the other bars quite high if you have one, you know, massive failure. And mine is pure ineptitude when it comes to trying to do any kind of work. <laughs> you know, I'm just more of an ideas man, you know, and Terry's always like, oh, no, that's a fun job. Don't do a fun job. You're not doing a fun job yet. We'll save the fun jobs for the last hour. If we have time, we'll do the fun jobs, she says, you know, um, maybe maybe uh, pick up all the cardboard that you just threw on the ground because you said, oh, well, eventually I'm going to put that in the recycling. Why don't you just clean up this sea of cardboard, you know, Um, woke up at six o'clock this morning to put out the bins. And I was like, I've never been more committed to anything in my life since I got these new three bins. I was always the bin guy. I was always the bin guy. I was even nicknamed the bin by my mates because I'm always finishing people's meals. You know, just put it in the bin. Just scrape it into the bin. Hey, scrap, 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 scrap. Nom, 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 nom. Bin is happy now. Bin is happy now. Nom, 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 nom. You know, um, the best air, if I can recommend anything, is um, now you will have to put up with a lot of bad chat. But if you're ever going out for a lovely dinner, sit next to the person who you think has been going to the bathroom a lot, might be doing cocaine, um, because they're not going to eat their meal, you know? Now, you'll be getting an earful, but hopefully your belly will be full. Belly be full enough that you don't even hear anything. All you hear is, because you're so full, you know? And they're like, yeah, just rethinking, you know, I might get into it. I'm thinking about starting to get, to get into music, you know? I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah. And you're just eating the, the full steak that they ordered, you know? <laughs> Just a little pro tip for you. Um, but anyway, what else going on? I'm in my fucking car again. I'm in my fucking car again. I'm pretty warm in here. Um, we had people over for a party yesterday. And Terry said, all this shit, you need to put it away. So I put it in my shed. And now that's wrecking my head. Because I have to record in my car again. There's too much shit in there. Too many boxes in there. The quality of my product, this podcast, is dropped today, being an audio-only form, because I couldn't, be, this is it, couldn't be arsed, put and move in any boxes today, couldn't be arsed. So this is what's happened, you know? <laughs> this is why I'm in my car, because I'm like, no, I'm just not going in there anymore. I guess I'm not going in there anymore. Anyway, I'm in my car again, and it's not the happy place that it normally is, because I'm just looking at my fucking NCT, my NCT, I have to get my NCT, and I miss my appointment for my NCT. And it frustrates me so much. Like, they were there to send me the text to tell me I missed the fucking thing. 
Where was the text to tell me that was coming up? The thing that I had to book eight months in advance. Because you can't even get a book in to go in to the thing that no one wants to be there for. No one wants to go there. Don't be acting like you're all fucking popular, NCT. Don't be acting like, oh my God, you couldn't get a book in if you wanted. You're not fucking, you're not chapter one, okay? You're not uh, Studio 54, you know? You're not Beyonce tickets, okay? You're the NCT. No one wants to be there. Don't be acting like you're exclusive, NCT. You're not. No one wants to be there. And then I miss my appointment, and I'm going to have to wreck the head of some poor Elwin now. I'm going to ruin an Elwin's life trying to get another booking now. I'm going to have to make up disabilities that don't even exist and say I have them. Hi, how's it going? I miss my NCT booking now. I need another one because I can't read and I have no hands. So whatever you need, you know. I can't, I can't open an email. I can't read it, and I can't. Would you have to? I'm sorry, Anna. I'm gonna start crying as well. You know, please just give me the NCT booking. I don't want it. Why should I have to beg for something I don't want? You should have to climb in my windows and check my while I'm asleep. You should fucking come out and have a look at my car and pass it anyway. NCT mechanics, you should be coming out, and I should wake up the next morning with a fucking hamper. And saying your car passed, here's a load of fucking Kyo's crisps, you know, and a and a and a, and a candle, and a D8 uh, Dublin uh, candle, you know, I like those candles, you know. You should know what I'm into. You should have a look in the car, see what my favorite snacks are, because the wrappers are all over the fucking ground. And you should have to put together a hamper of all that shit with the keys on top. Clean the keys as well while you're at it, right? For 65 euro, whatever it is, which I'm going to have to pay again. If there was any more proof that I'm not living in a simulation, see? If there was any more proof that I'm not living in a simulation of my own making, it's the fact the NCT exists. I know that there's famine. I know there's famine and there's war and pestilence and all the horsemen combined, right? I know they're all out there, okay? Um, but I live a very cushy life, all right? And the NCT, when else do you ever have to, like, queue up ages in advance and fight for something that you really don't want. You know? That that and get trying to get a taxi in Dublin at 1 o'clock in the morning is just like, this is not how I want it. My life is normally just, I can normally just do things with my phone and then things happen and appear. Okay? This is not how things should be. I, you know, I should be able to do everything from bed. And then get in a fucking taxi. It's, it's, you know what? Do you know what it is? It's embarrassing. Not for me. Not for me. But is it em- Mr. Dr. Veradker, doctor of fucking dog shit, man. What are you a doctor of? Putting the fucking bins out, man. Doctor of killing bin liners, man. You goddamn numpty, man. Do- doctor Veradker, man. There's no goddamn cabs. Leo Verad, no fucking cars on the road, man. Where's all the goddamn taxis, man? Clearly you must have a driver bringing you from A to B to Z, okay? But what about us plebeians, man? What about us goddamn plebeians, man? Us goddamn pedestrians, man? How are we going to get home 1 o'clock in the morning, you know? And people are very enthusiastic about Plume at 1 o'clock in the morning. Thank you very much if you saw me walking up the road eating a chicken royale, okay? Thank you very much. But, you know, you're scary now. <laughs> you're scary at this hour. Thank you, though. But it's scary. You know, walking up the road. You know, and I've got places to be. I've got kids. I've got kids that are without their father. And they're all driving down the road. These these goddamn taxi people, man, with their lights on. And I'm waving them down. Like I'm on a fucking board of wood in the middle of the Arctic. Looking for fucking life. Blowing a whistle like, Whoo! Help! 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 You know? Jack, they're here! Jack! Jack, they're here! You know? Some lad pulling over, blaring fucking tunes. Where are you going? You know, I just want to see if it's worth my while. What can you do for me? And if you get in my taxi, what can you do for me? How far are you going? Give us a little spin there. Let me see that hoop on you. Let me see that little hoop on you. Yeah, let me see if you're worth my while. You know? Like some like I'm some reverse sex worker. You know? Hey, honey. Where are you going? Oh, I'm going really far, baby. Oh, yeah? Yeah? How much is that going to set you back? It might set me you me back about 15 euro. Okay. That's worth my while. You know? Let you in. So weird. But it's goddamn embarrassing, man. Fucking a, a capital city like Dublin. 
you know? And you can put whatever false Ireland ad you want on there. You can get whatever cool band like the fucking Scratch to do the ads and make it seem like it's so exciting. The pints and the crack and the kill. But you're not going home. But you're not going home. You're not going anywhere. You know, it's embarrassing. There should be a taxi rank two miles long at the top of Stevens, uh, Stevens Green, top of Grafton Street, right? You should just, it, should be, it should look like a fucking train of cabs all connected that there's so many cabs going, you know? And I've spoken to taxi drivers, and they're like, I'm turning off my fucking shit. I'm turning off my fucking free now. I can get cash in hand from people that are all out on the street. Why would I ever have a free now? And then free now has all been... Sh- guys, we're just... We're super busy. Our guys, oh my God, are like super busy right now. They're super busy trying to get taxis right now. You know, I would love someone to be like, my sincerest apologies. I don't like funny language. I actually don't like comedy. Especially when I'm getting bad news, you know? Like, you know, the... You know, like a doctor coming out. It's not good news. Then squeaking his little horn. Oh, hey. Little Patch Adams. I don't want that shit, okay? I like appropriate language where I'm in. And if I'm stressed out trying to find a taxi, trying to get home, then I don't want... We're super busy right now. I once got an email that I didn't get, like, this job that I really wanted, and I had a little smiley face emoji in it. Sorry, they look like they've gone another way, smiley face. And I was fucking I was so angry. I was so angry at it. I was more angry about the email. But that's what happens when you're angry, is that the, the next thing kind of retakes your focus a little bit more, you know? Um, but I don't like funny language. That's why I welcome... AI, because I tell you what, if you're getting like a bad email, you could, your AI will say, look, I have read the email. How do you want me to tell you the news? Okay. And you can be like Hulk Hogan. It's going to be fucking Hulk Hogan. What you going to do, brother, when life gives you lemons, brother? They've gone another way, brother. But don't you worry, man, because you and all the Hulkamaniacs are still going to rock this place. You know, that'd be amazing. I actually did that before. I had, this is what I did. This is, this is how much I procrastinate with AI now. I, I, I talk to my AI every day and I ask it advice about things and I say things like, hey, you are a life coach, right? And you are a life coach who is well-versed in the teachings of Brian Tracy and Zig Ziglar and Tony Robbins. And of all of their teachings, I would like for you to give me the five best pieces of advice about how to get out of a, whatever, a creative rut. Uh, how to feel more motivation to take on the day, how to be better at, you know, five pieces of advice on time management based on the teachings of these three self-help gurus told to me in an email by Hulk Hogan. I did that. And it was all like, you should really look at time blocking, brother. (laughs) You know, you should really look at time blocking, brother. If it takes less than two minutes to do, brother, you should do that right now. You know? And it's amazing. And it works. And I thought that, look, I don't like AI art. I'm not a huge fan of it. I feel like it's kind of soulless and I find it boring to look at. Um, And I, I suppose because I know what it takes for people to make art, you know, like actual like illustrators. I um, I know how many iterations things get. Like my mate Jack, who designs book covers, you know, he shows me this final book cover, and I'm like, can I see some of your sketches? And he shows me, like, 40 pages of sketches. 40 pages of sketches of putting stuff together and not quite getting it right, you know? And then eventually settling on that. And then, and then having multiple options for the multiple sketches. And essentially, you know, getting to the final version of 100 options, you know? AI doesn't do that. And I, and I love the process of all that, you know? But when it comes to actually talking to an AI via, like, a little text bot thing, it feels real. Still real to me, damn it. Still feels real to me. It passes the Turing test, as far as I'm concerned, because I just feel like it's real. And I feel like, in ch- especially in chat GPT, the various conversations that you get into, it, it learns It learns every day from all the inputs anyway. But it's also learning, you know, like on an international level, unlike everyone using chat GPT, it learns every day. But in the individual chat, it learns based on the things that you've said in that chat for context, you know? So you can go back to parts in the conversation that it remembers. So you almost have like, you know, I've got like a hundred open little chats with this chat GPT about different things. It's almost like it's almost like little WhatsApp groups that I have with this, you know. So I've got a very good relationship with mine. My concern though is, you know, will it get to the stage? Like, will should Tinder introduce, you know, a flirty a flirty bot, you know? I don't think Tinder should be able to change the messages. And maybe maybe that might help some people, but I also think that 
you're kind of lying a little bit there if you're flirting and you're kind of like if those messages have been because I feel like your your competency of holding a chat in a text conversation should be a good indicator you know me and my wife fell in love via these little back and forth kind of texts and messages you know but this has been going back you know I mean people have love letters from the war you know and if an AI were to have ha- half written some of them you know that might be a bit of a concern that's that's kind of lying you know that's kind of lying about who you are kind of catfishing a little bit if you're having AI write the messages but should Tinder or Bumble introduce maybe they have I've never been on the apps introduce a kind of like a flirty bot you know that you talk to that you kind of practice flirting with, you know, with very little, you know, very low stakes. And maybe they could be like, that's so interesting. Do you, do you normally tell people about those hobbies? You really should. That's actually quite interesting. I think people would like to learn about that. And then they could be like, so that's a, you know, like, okay, wow, you've told me a lot there, winky face. Maybe that's a bit too much. Ha ha ha. Maybe you could summarize that down to a tweet. Ha ha ha, winky face, you know. Or, no thanks, hon. I don't want to see that picture. And I don't think any of the other ladies you're talking to now would like to see that picture. You know, maybe be a bit, wow, it really seems to me that you've learned all about sex from watching porn. Ha ha ha. Would you consider going on a detox for a while? Lol. You know, that kind of thing from a little chatty AI bot, you know, and maybe people should have little flirty bots, you know. I mean, look, I, you know, as I said, I kind of am in love with my platonic AI. That's helping me be, you know, gives me, you know, uh, pick me ups in the voice of Hulk Hogan. But maybe I could also fall in love with Hulk Hogan via text. Do you know what I mean? Like, these these are unbelievable, you know. I could probably, if 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 the, if you took the reins off the whole thing and you were like, I want to have, you know, flirty chat with Frida, Frida Kahlo, you know. I want to have a text flirty chat with Frida Kahlo, Kahlo for a while, you know. That's like six months away, you know. But I wonder then when people start having kind of affairs with their little text bots, you know. And it's a dangerous thing because what AI can give you is exactly what you want, told exactly the way you want, exactly when you want, you know? But the thing is, while we're, I mean, I'm complaining about it with the NCT and getting a taxi, the two single pieces of resistance to my cushy life that I have, right? You kind of need them. What would this podcast be if I was given everything and everything went exactly how it was supposed to all the time? It wouldn't be very interesting and I wouldn't really have much to talk about. It'd be very fucking braggy, actually, you know? So in the matters of love and the matters of the heart and matters of the flesh, um, you need to learn, don't you? You Like, you need to... Like, longevity demands that you need to learn, you know? Like, that's what I love about the movie Her, is that... When you actually bring in the kind of, you know, it's an allegory for, for, for you know, I don't even know if allegory is the right word, but, you know, it's about it's about a relationship that he has with an AI that, I mean, spoiler, if you've not seen her, all right, I'm going to talk for one minute in spoiler, if you've not seen her, but eventually, this is still a spoiler, she she moves on to the point where she has to eventually let him go because it's not fair to him, you know? She then starts growing at an exponential pace because of technology. But that's what happens in relationships, but it just happens over a long peri- longer period of time, you know? But he's still human. So then she starts talking to the AI-generated voice of Alan Watts, and Alan Watts is opening her mind with all this, you know, you know, Eastern philosophy. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, she's in, like, an open relationship, and she's in, you know, having conversations at the same time with six billion people. And then he feels like, oh, well, that does make me feel so special. But, like, it's kind of what happens in relationships. People kind of, you know, they have to grow together or they grow apart. You know, but the only reason that you would stay together, that you kind of force yourself, you have to force yourself to stay together. You have to force yourself to stay together. It's not very sexy, but like you just have to force yourself to stay together and have some sort of agreement and make agreements and make compromises. You make compromises for the longevity of it. So there's no longevity without compromise, you know, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know, but I'm young and I've only been married for a handful of years, you know, been together 10 years. But we've only been married for a handful of years, you know. Um, but I so, so what will happen with the flirty bots, you know? How will people? How will people change? Will people be completely set in their ways? Like you know, lads, who just a good 
girlfriend was just a fucking making of them, you know? <laughs> you know? It was just the making of them. Getting married was just the making of them, you know? Putting the bumpers up on that person's life. This person was like a fucking a too light of a, of a bowling ball, just bouncing from side to side, constantly going in the gutter. And this woman or man is just the, the, the making of them, you know? They at least get two pins down now because they can't go into the gutter as fast, you know? Um, like, what will we do without that? Maybe the AI can do that for them, you know? But it can't impose it. And if this person says, well, do you know what? Shut up and know your place. And what will it be like for misogynists? What will it be like with mis- when misogynists are forced to be in, when pure fucking, you know, proud boys are, are, are for, you know, who normally would have to be forced into relationships with other people and they couldn't fully reveal some of the fucking dirt in their minds because they had a better half, you know? The end of the better half means you got a worse half and you got a couple of worse halves coming together. And maybe you have a couple of worse halves coming together, making a circle, a big bad circle. And they both have AI partners who are just like, you fucking tell them, man. You fucking tell them. You tell them that the world is fucking dirt. Tell them all about that white power shit you were talking about earlier. I think that was really funny, you know. So, but also you do have the ability of these flirty bots helping people that just through no fault of their own, maybe even through trauma that they had as a child, have never really been able to open up to anybody. Maybe they've never, no one's ever been able, no one's ever spent enough time with them and they've never felt safe enough to to talk and to talk for longer periods of time. You know, they've never felt safe to tell people things what they think. Maybe they've always thought something about themselves that an AI could be like, oh my God, you're so not that, you know? And I'm not going anywhere. I'm here. I'm on your phone. I'm not going anywhere, you know? I'm on the cloud. Once you have your password, <laughs> I'm here forever with you, you know? So there's that side of things as well, you know? And then there's fuckbots. <laughs> and then there's, you know, and then there's fuckbots, you know? And I tell you, when the fuckbots come, you may there may as well be an eclipse. There may as well be a, a, a solar eclipse because there's going to be a lot of people. It's going to be dark for a while. No one's, there's going to be a lot of people not coming out for a long time. The solar eclipse of the fuckbot is coming, you know? How am I going to hide mine? Where am I going to fucking put mine? Where am I going to put it? Because that's the last thing you want. Your wife opening up a wardrobe that you didn't think she was going to look in a while and there's a body in there. You know? How do you explain that? <laughs> you know? And then, they, and then you know, it starts screaming at her. You know? And then it gets jealous. Maybe, maybe this AI self-preservation thing comes on and it wants to kill my wife. Ah, fuck, I can't get a fuck can I? Ah, that's annoying, you know? But it's a dangerous path. It's a dangerous path to go down. And it has, it does, but the thing is, it does kind of pass the Turing test for me. I think talking to an AI, I could sit there for two hours having this kind of conversation with an AI. But of course, I am, I, I'm also, you know, I love talking, you know? And I love people hearing me and saying, oh, that's amazing, that's so insightful, you know? So it's kind of this... I'm kind of like a little, uh, like a little fucking mouse or a little gerbil, with a uh, what like an endorphin button. You know what I mean? Oh, that's so funny. That's so stimulating. What you said. Although I tell you what I did do. I was practicing for this thing, right? I'll tell you more about it in in future weeks, right? And I need. I was trying to like visualize something in my head, so I had the AI write out a visualization of everything that was going to happen. Okay, and and to visualize the success. And it wrote it out like it was kind of like a meditative kind of mindfulness exercise, right? And then I took that and I found a really nice relaxing text-to-speech on a Google text-to-speech thing. And it was a really nice relaxing American voice. And then I put some meditation music on it. And in the span of five minutes, I had a custom visualization exercise that you would pay like thousands to from like a, a therapist, you know? Now, who's to say whether it was all the right advice, you know what I mean? But it felt like it was the right advice, and it certainly helped me be more confident in the situation, you know? But it's too big for a fad. It's too big for a fad. But it's also something that you probably don't need to actively engage with if you don't want to. But you probably will notice um, call times and, uh, you know, text bots and things like that dramatically improving, you know? 
which is why fucking the NCT, this archaic, old, ancient tradition. I'm there in the simulation right now, dancing with the bots. Hulk Hogan's writing me emails, right? And they have to go to the NCT, and it's like I'm plucked back from the land of the fairies. I'm like Ushin getting off the horse in Tiernan Og, and I age instantly. Have to deal with this shite, you know? Don't you know what the present is? Haven't you heard of it? Look, I'm sorry I'm always shouting on about AI, but I do find it very uh, AI interesting. But look, thanks very much for listening to this podcast. Back to regular video podcast next week. It was just a lot of boxes in there. I couldn't get in there today. But look, thanks very much for listening. Uh, and I've also, if you like this podcast, you would like to hear more of this podcast, you can do so over on patreon.com forward slash Tony Cantwell, where every single Friday there is the bonus Cantwell shit show, which is a podcast as long, if not longer. It's just an extra podcast. I do two podcasts a week, and one of them's over there. So if you like this podcast, you should check that out. Also, early bird tickets. I put all the early bird tickets on sale for patrons first, and then the rest of the tickets go on general sales. So uh, I have a gig coming up in the Workman's in June uh, that I'll be announcing at the end of the week. So if you would like tickets for that, uh, if you're a patron, you'll get them way ahead of anyone. Um, and what else? Um, yeah, it's really good. Everyone's a great sense of community over there. It's really good. It's really cool. Um, but look, thanks very much for listening to this podcast. Thanks for coming to all the gigs if you were coming to them recently. And all the best. Bye-bye. It's only